الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عواجا الحمد لله الذي له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض وله الحمد في الآخرة وهو الحكيم الخبير الحمد لله فاطر السماوات والأرض جاعل الملائكة رسلا رسلا أولي أجنحة مثنى وثلاث ورباع يزيد في الخلق ما يشاء إن الله على كل شيء قدير الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله لقد جاءت رسل ربنا بالحق وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة فكشف الله به الغمة وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما أما بعد Few things have been going on within the Muslim Ummah since the last time I gave khutbah over here and if it is not the khutbah where we are going to address the matters of the Muslim Ummah where else can we talk about matters that are related to our Muslim Ummah? I have many things in my mind related to the Muslim Ummah. But for the sake of time, maybe I'm going to address two topics that are not related. No, they are actually very related to each other. They may look as if they are not related at the beginning but once you think deeply they are extremely related one to the other let me start with the incident that happened probably a few weeks ago the incident that united the hearts of the muslim ummah from the east all the way to the west all the muslim ummah or majority of the Muslim Ummah, all of us were making dua for the same person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would save him. Maybe some of you started to realize that I am talking about the young boy, the five-year-old boy Rayyan, who fell inside a deep well in Morocco. I would assume all of you are aware of the incident or mo most of you but for those who are not aware it was an incident where a young boy five years old he was walking somewhere playing then he fell into a well this well is 32 meters deep just to imagine the depth of the well, it is a 15-story building, something like this. Or 10-story building, I would say. 10-story building. The well is very tight. At the top, it is maybe 30, 40 centimeters. And if you go down, it is just 20 centimeters in the width which means it is very tight as you go down. The child, because the child was kind of a small in size, he was able to go all the way down. But the rescue team for an adult person, an adult cannot go all the way down to get the child. And they cannot increase the width of the well 
any digging from the top of the well will result in the dust coming on the head of the boy all the way at the bottom he will choke and die and as probably most of you are aware the plan to rescue the boy is to dig another well 32 meters vertically and then go horizontally with the Bible to rescue the boy this is the summary of the incident but where are the reflections can we let such an incident go by without having some reflections on the incident <clears throat> let me start with this question for you and for me have you really imagined yourself being in this well have you imagined yourself at the position of Ryan? This is the name of the boy. Have you really imagined that you are walking and then you fall down in a well 32 meters deep? You call for help, but no one is listening. You stay in the well. How many days did Ryan stay in the well before they were able to get him out? Not a day not two not three five days have you imagined yourself in this well for five days no food no drink you can hardly breathe you may not even able to turn left or right the well is extremely tight have you imagined yourself really in this position for five days extremely cold at night you can keep imagining how the situation was horrible <coughs> but subhanallah when i started to imagine myself in this position there was a scary thought that came to my mind when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the hellfire in the quran allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذَا أُلْقُوا مِنْهَا مَكَانًا ضَيِّقًا مُقَرَّنِينَ دَعَوْ هُنَالِكَ ثُبُورًا This imagination, although if we imagine in dunya, if we fall in the well, it is going to be horrible. But what if we fall inside a well in the hereafter, in the hellfire? Allah describes the hellfire and Allah says, and if they are thrown in the hellfire, مَكَانًا ضَيِّقًا Tight location, a well that is very tight. And this is not the end of the problems. They are tied up and the places in the hellfire as if I would imagine maybe similar to this well. Is it tighter? Is it 32 meters? Or are we going to be falling down for 70 years all the way down? And even it is not just a well. This is in the hellfire. If we imagine someone is falling in a well in the hellfire. It is not just a well that's tight, remaining over there forever. You cannot turn left or right. No food, no water. You cannot breathe. But it is burning as well the scary or the thought is very scary are we seeking protection from such a situation in the hellfire may allah protect all of us whenever i ask the group of the youth to reflect on this incident probably 40 of our younger generations i asked them to reflect on this incident i got a wide range of reflections for example, and now I'm just kind of carrying over those reflections to you. Some of them, they said, may Allah have mercy with the parents of Rayyan. And for sure we make dua for Rayyan and his parents that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give them mercy, patience out of his bounty. So one group of the youth or on one side, some people, they showed sympathy to the family of Rayyan. However, on the other side, 
other group of the youth, they started to question, why is there a well over there that is not covered? Who made this well? According to the news, it was the dad of Ryan. So they continued to question, is there anyone asking, why did the father of Ryan leave the well open? Why are we talking about sympathy with the dad and no one is talking about punishment for the dad? How come he would leave the well open? Ryan fell in the well. It was his own son, but another kid could have fallen in the well. Is there anyone talking about the punishment of Ryan's dad? And the spectrum in between was all filled by the reflections of the youth. Some of the youth, they said, the rescue team, may Allah reward them the best. They stayed for five days, working day and night to rescue Rayyan. May Allah reward them the best. That was on one side. On the other side, some of the youth said, five days to dig 32 meters? This is a useless rescue team in a useless country. They were not prepared. They were not equipped. They were not trained. They are responsible for the death of that kid. What would you expect after five days? Now I'm showing you the spectrum of reflections. And it's up to everybody of us to choose where you would like to be. However, there was another deeper reflection that started to go completely symbolically from this incident. The young boy, he started to mention, forget the word Rayyan. Rayyan is just a symbol. It is a symbol for the dignity and honor of our Ummah that fell down in a deep well. And the rescue team are the people among our Ummah who are determined to dig down, get the dignity and the honor of the Muslim Ummah and get it all the way up to the surface so that the Muslim Ummah will go back to its mission and rule the entire humanity. So Rayan, it is not a boy. This is the dignity of our Ummah. The rescue team are the sincere Muslims who are digging down to rescue the dignity and the honor of our deen. May Allah reward them the best. But let's continue with the same analogy. Are people who are digging to save the honor of the Muslim Ummah, are they prepared? Are they trained? Are they equipped? Or do they look like the rescue team of Rayyan? How many people were there in the rescue team of Rayyan? And how many people were doing nothing but dua? And how many people they just showed emotions? Same for people who are willing to rescue the dignity and honor of the Muslim Ummah. How many of us is working hard day and night to rescue the dignity and honor of the Muslim Ummah? How many of us are just making dua? And how many of us, they're just showing bunch of emotions? And you can keep drive this analogy as far as you would like to. And here is one question. Here is one important question. And I have been following the news of Rayyan. I have been following the news of Rayyan and all the media outlets. 
they gave us the news of Ryan. But I don't know. What about the well? I didn't hear anything about the well. Is the well still open or did they close the well? Is this well still open so that every now and then we will get another Rayyan? Or did we learn the lesson and we closed the well so no more Rayyans are going to be coming in the future? This is the question that I'm not sure if I got any answer. All the media talking about Rayyan, but what about the well? Are there some people who stood up to close the well? Or is it left open over there? I say this and I pray for you and for you. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah. Coming back to the question that one of the youth asked, are we supposed to punish Rayyan's dad? Or are we supposed to show sympathy with him in this situation? But I would like to ask another question for myself and for everybody over here. Are we doing like the father of Rayyan? Did I and you, and you dig wells and we left open for our kids to fall in? Yes or no? By us coming over here to a country where our kids are being taught some of the stuff that is completely against the Islamic values. Did we open a well for our kids and left it open for them to fall down? Did we open a well of secularism for them? A will of nationalism for them, a will of feminism for them, a will of atheism for them by bringing them over to this country. And we are leaving these wells open so that our kids will be falling into. Do we deserve a punishment like the dad of Rayyan? And the will that Ryan's dad made, it is 32 meters deep. But the wells that we may have created for our own kids, it is very deep. And it may lead to the hellfire by the end of the well. Are we leaving these wells open? Or did we try to close them? Are we educating our kids? Yes or no? And now let me switch to the other incident or the other, whatever, the other calamity that is happening with the Muslim Ummah. Did you hear what was going on in Sweden? And actually Sweden has been taking the attention of the media, but I would say this happens in other countries as well. Some of the Muslim families who migrated to Sweden as refugees, but those Muslim families, when they migrated to Sweden, the government, the social services, or as they call it, the social, they kidnapped their kids. They took their kids from them. Why the social services took the kids of the Muslim family? So Muslim families migrating to the West so that they provide good life for their kids. They go over there and they end up in the situation our kids are taken away from us. Why the kids are taken away from them? Because they are committing honor-related crimes. Yes, those Muslim parents, when they went to Sweden, they committed honor-related crimes. And let me explain, what does it mean honor-related crime over there? Honor-related crime means if you tell your son or daughter 
do not have a boyfriend or a girlfriend do not do improper relationship you value the honor of your deen over the freedom of the kids and this is a crime so they come and take the kids away again if i tell my son or daughter do not do something that we know in our deen haram i value the honor of my deen over the freedom of my kids it is an honor related crime they take the kids away from me did those parents dig a well for their kids and left it open can you imagine some of those muslim kids can you imagine those girls are gonna be taken from their moms and dad given to a swedish family and our own muslim girls are gonna live under the same roof with non-mahram males this is what is happening to the muslim brothers over there when is it gonna be our turn do you know that in one country they made a law and this law passed that if my son comes to me and he tells me hey dad by the way dad i figured out that i'm a girl i'm not a boy anymore if i tell my son hey boy be a real man they can take me to jail for five years are we aware of this situation and what are we doing so that we are not next is it coming to be our turn yes definitely if we remain silent if we do not voice our opinion if we do not say we the muslim community there are some some islamic values we cannot accept what you are doing but here is the problem going back to the situation of ryan and his rescue team when the incident of ryan happened the rescue team was clearly underprepared. They were not thinking of such an incident. A good rescue team should be trained. A rescue team should not wait for the incident to happen. And then they start thinking, how should we rescue Ryan? They should have mimicked such situations. They should have been prepared long before the incident. But because they were not prepared, whenever the incident happened, they were useless. And it took them five days to dig 30 meters, which is a joke. What about you and me? Are we digging wells for our kids to fall into? And whenever they fall into, we will be underprepared. We cannot help. It's too late. If you do not prepare ahead of time, it's too late. Are you waiting for a law to pass so that it can deprive us from our rights to raise our kids as Muslims? Where are we as Muslim community? If we tell the social workers or the social services here in the US, we don't want to break Muslim families. The kids need to be with their families. But in the worst case, if mom and dad are doing a bad job and the kids are to be taken, why they are not given to another Muslim family? Is there an entity among the Muslim community that can stand up and speak on behalf of the Muslim community? Or are we going to be waiting to hear moms and dads screaming and crying like Sweden? We lost our kids. Are those kids continue to be Muslims if they are giving to a non-Muslim family? Who is going to be responsible? Can something like this take us in a deep well in the hellfire because we did not help those families? I know that there is a group of youth who are planning sometime in March for an event, educational event for the community trying to make task forces try to see are there people in the community who are willing to talk with the government let them know our restrictions as muslims take an action those kids 
And this, these incidents happen here in the U.S. They happen everywhere. Just Sweden took the attention of the media. But you never know when this is going to happen a lot here in the U.S. We see what they are teaching our kids in school. We see how their teachings are going far away from our Islamic values. In the future, we have our bathrooms over here, whether on the men's side or the female side. If a man comes asking, I want to use the women's restroom because I identify myself as such and such. Can we say no? Would you allow your daughters to be making wudu while people from the opposite gender? Where are we? We need to voice our needs. Otherwise, we blame nobody but us as a community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the rescue team, not just for saving Rayyan, the rescue team who would be digging down to get the dignity, honor, and bring victory back to the Muslim Ummah. Just stay tuned. If there was an announcement for such an event, probably it becomes part of our responsibility to participate and support as much as we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people who listen to the speech and follow the best among it. Allahumma ja'alna mujtama'ina ala kalamik, mutahabbina fi jalalik, wa adhillana bidhilla arshika yawma la dhilla illa dhilluk, wa akhfir allahumma lil muslimin wal muslimat, al mu'minin wal mu'minat, al ahyai minhum wal amwat, innaka ya rabbana sami'un qaribun mujibu al-da'awat, subahan rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursalina, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, أقم الصلاة يرحمك الله